What up, world? We are back. This is another episode, man. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is the Cloud Chronicles. If you did not know, uh, I'm your host, Johnny Blaze. Uh, you may know this man sitting, uh, I wouldn't say across from me. He's sitting with us. <laughs> yeah. We're all together virtually. Um, he is a, a comedian. He's an actor. He's a writer. Uh, plus size model, too, if you didn't know. <laughs> uh, he's the he's the winner from the uh, March Comedy uh, Madness. He's the winner of the Best of Boston finalist at the Bay Area Black Comedy Competition, and he is also has a podcast called the Hollings Worthless Program. Is that right? Yes. Yep. And you got the other one? Uh, no, I didn't. Tell me the other one. Uh, Love in Black and White. It's a Love in Black relationship. and White. Okay. All yeah. right. Great. And the Love in Black and White podcast. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. I want everybody to put your hands together. Uh, give a big warm welcome uh, to the show to Big Irish J. What's up, everybody? Everybody, sit, sit down. You don't have to stand up. I appreciate it. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Fucking air horn, air, air, air horn. Yeah, we had to get it in there, man. We got to get it in. Oh, man. Thank you so much for joining me, man. Uh, thank you for having well, me. I'm glad I could do it, man. I'm, I'm, in, I'm down here in Texas, man, dealing with these storms. I don't know if you. Oh, shit. Yeah, which, man. Which part of Texas are you in? uh the dallas fort worth area okay all right yeah gotcha. like fort worth fort, more fort worth than dallas yeah Holy so shit. so yeah Have man you lost it, power at all oh yeah oh yeah we had uh <laughs> since sunday 3 a.m uh went oh, out fuck. everything we still don't have water dude and still then fucking water. ted cruz just went on vacation yeah yeah he's chilling he's chilling but i mean we got you know everything the electricity's on you know wi-fi uh but just no water but you know we'll, we'll figure it out we're texans yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out you born and raised but, there? Yeah, yeah, oh, man. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah. But I mean, I've I've went up to I've been up to South Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the coldest I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this is this is it, bro. This is tops down here, man. This is below freezing. This is it's wild. Know. Yeah, man. So, anyways, let's get back to you, man. This is Big Irish J, man. Uh, you've seen him on a lot of stuff. He's been all over TV. Um, so we're gonna uh, let's talk about what you've been doing, man. Since um, shit. I mean, the world got put on pause, man. How's everything? Yeah. Been going? Uh, pretty overall, pretty good. Uh, other, <laughs> you have, I have a fucked up sense of humor. I was going to say things have been going pretty good other than my mom died last year. It's oh, like, Hey, 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 I want that. Life. Hey bro. Let me tell you something. I didn't censor nothing. We are here for that. Yeah. That is why, that is why you are here. No, okay. So I, I it, was Mar- <laughs> it, it was uh March last year. So every, every March I always go to Boston and do a run. Of, I started comedy in Boston and I'm Irish St. Patty's days in March. So March, I usually, do a run of shows through Boston uh, or through Massachusetts. And I was in the middle of my run and March 15th, the uh, booker called me. He's like, Hey man, with COVID we're shutting, we, we, everything's canceled. So I was like, Oh fuck. All right. So now I then went into, Oh, let me, I should back up leading up to that from March of 2019 through March of 2020, I was homeless, but in a good way. Like I was on the, I was out on the road every weekend. Right. Right. Um, during the week, I would stay with a buddy in Pasadena, or I would stay with a friend in uh, in Phoenix. Hold on one sec. Excuse me. Sorry. You're good. Go ahead. Take your arm. Doing the fucking pounding this. Um, so, <laughs> the, so the goal was after that run in March of 2020, I was going to figure out: Am I going to get a place uh, in LA again, or Phoenix, or Vegas, or Boston, or Seattle? I was trying to figure that out. Then the quarantine happened, uh, or the you know everybody's uh, locking down. I stayed with my friends uh, in Phoenix, and one of them, she has like a autoimmune, uh, not autoimmune deficiency, but she's got like some immune, di- some some shit where she can get sick. So she was yeah, like, she's can- more susceptible. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly and she yeah. was like, "You can quarantine with us. You know, you're part of the family, but just know that if you quarantine with us, you literally can't be going out and this and that." And I was like, "Yeah, right, you know, I, I I I'll commit to that." So. I quarantined with them until August of last year. And then I finally was like, fuck it. I, I gotta, I gotta move. And so I moved here to Vegas where I'm at now. And, uh, it's been good. Like, um, the, uh, like I, I also, after that, I went to, uh, I did a run of the Looney bins through kind of like middle America. I've been to Oklahoma uh-huh. city doing shows and Vegas is like, they're starting to open up more now, but, right. um, they've been open that like kind of like 25% capacity. So mm-hmm. I do, I do the LA comedy club all the time at, at the stratosphere. I love those guys. And uh, I did Brad Garrett's uh, maybe a month ago. Uh, he has so, a comedy club, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, he's funny, country. man. He's a funny dude. dude, funny dude. He's the, and he's like the most gracious dude. Like before working uh, his club, the first time 
I'd heard from all these people, Brad Garrett's the nicest dude. He's the nicest dude. And then when you meet him, he, whatever you thought of what nice was, he surpasses that. He's just a yeah. good dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know, man. Cause you know, there's certain people like you wonder like, damn dude, if I ever get the chance to meet, like, you know, they say, don't meet your heroes. Yeah. Don't meet people like you, even though you're not even a hero, just somebody you like, like you yeah. really like their work, man. And if they're a dick or <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, fuck, I wasted all that money on you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, um, that's great. So, so have you been, have you, now you start, I'm, it's like, I'm going to be interviewing you too. Cause I'm Oh yes, curious. go ahead. Please, uh, please. I'm ready. I'm so ready. You, you started comedy in Texas. Yeah. I'm well, let me, let me back up because I, I don't like to say that I'm a comedian because mm. I've never been on the stage. Okay. So I like to, I think that that is a, I give you guys like the utmost respect I had people Appreciate tell me that. that I'm funny and I've had people say, Hey, you know, you should go do it, but I've never done it. So I don't take that title. I don't pretend to be a comedian. I, I have funny that. stuff. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I can, I can, I have funny stuff. I can be funny. I'm not okay. going to lie. You know what I'm saying? I've had people tell me I'm funny, <laughs> but I am by no means I've never gotten on stage. That's a whole nother ballpark. It's an art. I, it's something I've, I've thought about, but it's something that if I do, I'm not going to half-ass do. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to study man, because you know, I've watched you, I've watched you talk about it. I've watched, you know, like um, when you were on um, several shows where we were just all comedians. Yeah, yeah. And so I've watched how y'all talk about it. And I mean, I treat that, you know, it's just like, you're not going to get the respect going in half ass. Oh yeah, 100%. You know, it's funny how you speak of stand up is how I talk about acting. Like, cause, uh, mm -hmm. um, cause people will be like, are you an actor? And I'm like, I mean, I've done some stuff, but I don't know if I want to, I, yeah, I, I guess it's a weird thing because I like before ever doing anything in acting, I I used to shit on acting like, eh, fuck, it's just make believe you're just acting. Mm -hmm. But then having never done a like an acting class or anything, I remember my first like commercial audition. It was like it would be something like, say, like you, you ask somebody, hey, what time is it? And that's it. Right. Like you're that's your only line. Right. And then you start you get in there. And you start doing all this shit that you've never done in your life. Like I, one thing that always goes through my head in any audition, for whatever reason, I always like start going doing weird shit with my hands. And then in my head, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck do I do with my hands? So I'd be like, what time is it? You know? Yeah. Like, like, how are you like, doing? Yeah. <laughs> so so it's like uh, when people are like, you're an actor. I'm like, I mean, I've acted in some stuff, but I don't. I'm not like a classically trained actor, you know, because that's a skill that I don't have. And right, I, I right. Respect it the same way. Like I, I have friends that are actors. They're comics, but they're also like classically trained actors. And I watch them. I'm like, oh, that's fucking acting. That's dope, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely something. So you're you're like me too. It's definitely something. I I had a really close friend of mine, and he was telling me the other day. He was like, man, he's like, bro, you're an actor. Like you. I was like, I don't, I don't have any credits or anything. He's like, but you are an actor. <laughs> he's like, trust yeah. me when I tell you this. He's like, that's in you. That's something you need to look into doing. I was like, yeah. But like, I kind of felt the same way. I'm like, that's some real shit, bro. Like, I, I look at it different, man. I, I, I just, I give you guys like, you know, even if you've done anything, you've been in something, have you have some credits? Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've done some commercials. I, I yeah, that. that's, that's, that's work, bro. That's work. Yeah. Like, I tip my head. Like, that's awesome. That's awesome doing commercials. <laughs> What commercials did you do? Let's get like, into that. I, I fucking ate before, and I keep looking. I'm like, I got shit in my teeth. But anyway. no, you're good. I'd let you know. I'd let you know. I, I, uh, uh, what did I do? I uh, I did a um, I did a commercial for WD40 where I played like a construction worker that fucking was like hitting on a yoga instructor, and then I I was in a, <laughs> I was in a little Dicky music video uh, where I played a bouncer. Um, I like little Dicky. I like little Dicky. And then, uh, oh, I was in an NBA commercial where I played a valet. I played a valet, which uh, luckily there was nobody else in the in the scene. Otherwise, you'd be like, "How's this fucking giant fucking cars?" You know. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, "You gotta call. You gotta call a friend for the small for the sports cars." I know you're not getting in those. Yeah, and then I've done like some, uh, you know, like uh, interviews on like comedy documentaries and and other shit and. Uh, I was in two broke girls, but they cut my scene. I played a gay dude's love interest, and I had to kiss a dude, and then they cut the scene. Isn't that the worst? I mean, not the, that not that whole part, but I mean, just being in the movie. I mean, because I, I don't know if you told maybe one or two people, yeah. but <laughs> even to yourself, like, oh man. And then you go watch this. So when did they tell you it was cut, or did you so notice when you watched it's, it? It's funny because I, I tell the story on stage because, like, a lot of okay, my comedy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, a lot of my comedy is, well, I, I say most of the stuff I say on stage is either something that happened to me or something that I have a, a strong belief in. Um, 
And a lot of my stories where if it's something that happened to me, a lot of them are uncomfortable situations. And so when I'm telling the story, I try and paint a picture where I want everybody into that really uncomfortable feeling because I think that's where right. the funny is, is like, uh, you know, uh, being out of your element. And um, so I, I, you know, I, I've never been, a I've never acted before. Uh, I got this role in Two Broke Girls. The, the, my agent at the time, he was like, uh, he's like, hey, I'm submitting you for a role on the TV show Two Broke Girls. So I was like, holy shit, dope. And he goes, he goes, yeah, you're going to play a love interest. And I was like, is it Kat Dennings or is it the, the right. other girl? And he's like, <laughs> no, it's for way, right? <laughs> yeah. And he was, he was like, no, it's for Patrick. And I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, you're a gay dude's love interest. Excuse me. And I was like, I was like, that's fine, whatever. Right, cool. And he cool. goes, he goes, well, hold on, I gotta ask you something else. He goes, all right. I go, what, what's that? He goes, uh, are you okay with kissing a dude? You gotta kiss a guy on national TV. Now, uh, in my head, a couple things were happening. So, uh, w w I'm sure you've heard, like with Hollywood, you go out for a thousand things and you'll get none of them. So, right, so right. when he's asking me this, I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm I, whatever. I'm down for whatever. Because in my head, yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna get it. So, fuck right. it. yeah, sure, I'm down for whatever. And right. then the next day he called me. He's like, you got it. They want you on set right now. You got to get to set <laughs> right now. So I'm driving to the set, having no acting training. And, and, I, and in my head, I was like, what the fuck is I'm like, what's a TV kiss? What is that? I don't know what a TV kiss is. Like, do I? Yeah, I, you got me, bro. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I told the, I told my agent, I go, if I have to tongue kiss this dude, I will fucking vomit in his mouth. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. I'm not, I haven't acted that long. <laughs> it's, it's, and the, the dude that I was doing the scene with, uh, his name's, uh, funny enough, his name is actually Patrick Cox. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, he, he's a hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. We're not writing this up. Okay. This is, this is yeah. show. Yeah. This you can is, look him up. Look up Patrick Cox. It, it, actor it's pre-recorded, but this is not written here. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude too. Uh, but he's straight, he's straight also. And this was his first, like, on tv kiss with a dude so like we both were like talking about like yeah this is pretty fucking weird <laughs> and, um, like that you're just like what the fuck yeah so we film it or whatever and uh and my agent or, or actually a buddy of mine my buddy josh who's done a lot of acting he um he said you know you get paid again when it airs i was like really he goes yeah so i called my agent and I was like, yeah, my buddy who's an actor said that when this airs, I'm going to get paid again. And he was like, he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that usually happens that way. But uh, I was going to call you uh, your scene ran long or your episode ran long and they cut your scene. And then I just started dying laughing. And I'm sure this guy is not <laughs> used to working with actors because uh, he's like, you're not upset. I was like, no, nah, it gives a better ending to the story that I'm telling on stage now that I right. went through all this shit. And then they just you don't know how much scene. material you just gave me right yeah. here. <laughs> My dog's in the room fucking around with the mic. What's up, Wrinkles? All right. Um, oh, I have seen the dog on um on other episodes of other shows uh, as well. Yeah. He's a good pup, right, Rinks? You just hear me beat him. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I think that, I can't remember what show was on, but you was mad when uh, you had him like right there. <laughs> oh, it might have been zooming with the homies. Yeah, I, I think it was zooming. Yeah. I think it was zooming. I, yeah, I watch that all the time. So yeah, I, I think it might have been zooming. You had him up there. I dude, I just sent. I'm gonna send it to you on IG. I okay. sent a picture to uh, uh, a message. I sent a message to Tahir and Kev with this picture of this chick on Bumble that I, it, dude, it looks like Tahir. I was like, why is Tahir out here? <laughs> no, I, oh, dude, I'm sending it to you right now so you can Go look ahead. at it live on the on the thing. Where is the, okay, there it is. I said, why is Tahir out here in Vegas living his best life? <laughs> and I'll tell you what Tahir said when uh, you see it. Oh, no. Tell me Listen, it doesn't look like a female. It looks just like him, this one right here. <laughs> the second one especially. Oh, and Tahir said, I bet I'm thick. <laughs> <laughs> that was his response? I Listen, I'm never, I don't know him or anything, but I, I know of him just from watching him, and that sounds exactly like what he's <laughs> with somebody. Dude, we, like. we were all dying. I was just like, <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious, okay. man. That is hilarious. So, so, um, so, man, so tell me about the podcast or the podcasts. Plural. Um, sure. So, I have two of them. The Hollings Worthless. My last name's Hollings Worth, so I went with Hollings Worthless. The Hollings Worthless program, which also the initials HWP is height, weight, proportionate, which I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't notice that. I almost, I almost like when I was reading it, I almost read it wrong. I was like, oh, the Hollings, because I knew that was your last name. Yeah. So yeah. I just thought it was like. 
program. And then I was like, oh, that's less. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, the self-deprecating shit. So yeah. the, the Hollings Worthless, I've been doing, Jesus, I've been doing that podcast for, oh God, over probably 10, 10 to 11 years. And it's, and it's, it's gone all over the place. It's had different co-hosts. It started out where it was just me talking for like, 30, 30 minutes to an hour. And, uh, I, I couldn't even stand listening to myself for that long. So, right. um, my buddy, Phil Fox, uh, was, has been a co-host for a long time. Who's like just this, uh, character that he's, we jokingly say he's a lovable, the lovable loser. And when I say that he's not a loser, but he just, he, we say he's like walking Murphy's law, whatever can right. go wrong will happen to him. All the time. <laughs> um, and it, but it, so now it's, it's me, Phil, <laughs> Uh, my buddy Manny, who I do the other podcast with, and Sean McCann, who's uh, one of my best friends. That's uh, he's uh, he's produced comedy, and um, he's it's it's funny because all of us are comics except for Sean, and Sean kind of plays like the the straight man perfectly, yeah. you know. And uh, and he also is will is not afraid to have the, uh, an unpopular opinion and explain it. And you're kind of like, oh fuck, maybe he's got a valid point, you know. And, yeah. Um, and the podcast that we, we just, we talk about whatever, I mean, it's freewheeling right. and, uh, and, you know, we'll talk about current events. We'll talk about, you know, poly, I mean, it literally is whatever's going on and whatever. Right. Well, just kind of keeping up with whatever's going on in the world today type stuff. Right. Like Phil, Phil right now is on the dating apps and he also, he's working, uh, across town, uh, or across like a few hours from home. And he, he like the other day, he, he's told us he brought a sex toy and we're like, you have a sex toy. And he was like, yeah. So then that <laughs> spawned now. We have Phil Fox. Got a whole episode, dude. <laughs> yeah, and we, we do Phil Fox sex toy reviews on every episode now. Dude, man. Um, the other podcast, the one that I do with Manny, uh, is called Love in Black and White, and it's a it, every, all all of the, anything I'm involved in podcast wise uh, or show any of my shows. The first thing is comedy. First thing is funny, and then right. everything else is secondary. So, um, <clears throat> the Love in Black and White, it's a dating relationship podcast, but. Uh, we tell people going in, know that we're comics and we're going to go for the laugh, you know, exactly. Um, and, uh, 